How's it going everybody? My name is Stevie Wonderkid and I have here in front of me the brand new Bravado Gauntlet Classic Custom modified to resemble Dominic Toretto's 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona that was featured in the Fast and Furious 6 movie. So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be recreating his car and I'm going to be showing you guys pretty much all the mods you're going to need to apply in Benny's to make a really accurate replica of the car. I want to kind of note something before I get started is that Pretty much the base car that we use for this, the Gauntlet Classic, is based off of a Dodge Challenger or a Plymouth Cuda. So, <laughs> I just don't think this is the right move on Rockstar's part. They already had the Dukes in the game, and that's based off of the Dodge Charger, as you guys know. And it would have been so easy for them to recreate the Dodge Charger Daytona just by putting the Daytona front end on that car. But they chose to do it on the, the, the Dodge Challenger or the Plymouth Barracuda, whichever one you want to call it. I really don't know why. And as you can see, the, the proportions of the car are pretty awkward. The wing doesn't quite match up the best as well but there are quite a few tuning parts that i think are obvious nods to dominic toretto's Charger daytona and that's what we're going to be exploring today in benny's and then i'll show you guys um some variances you can't get like a perfect match of all the parts on this car but i'll be showing you guys some options for some of those where there are some discrepancies but yeah without further ado let's take the car into benny's and see what's up all right, so now that we're in Benny's, we're gonna start taking a look at all of the external upgrades. For all of these videos, I tend to skip the performance mods that's kind of down to you, what you have unlocked, all that stuff. So going into the bumpers, for the front bumper, we chose the single vented nose cone. Really, you could keep this stock. It doesn't affect all that much. As long as you keep like the front bumper here up top stock, there's a couple options here that kind of create these little indents, as you can see in the center there between the headlights. That's not going to match up very well with Dom's car, which is why you could leave it stock or I just went with a single vented nose cone. Either or. Uh, either one is going to work and it's going to be pretty accurate. Moving on to the rear bumpers, we went with the primary bumper. Again, this is where the, uh, the, the fact that they use the Gauntlet Classic rears its ugly head because the rear end just doesn't look close to the Dodge Charger Daytona at all. But because Dom's Charger Daytona was all one color and we have the option to change the, to the primary bumper, that's what we chose for this one. Any other external mods just looked way too much and again, they are chrome too. So uh, to keep it all one color, to kind of keep in mind the clean uh, look of Dom's Charger Daytona, we just put on the primary bumper. Moving into the chassis for the aerials, these are actually the antennas. We leave these stock. There's no external antennas on Tom's car. For the rear cover, we chose the primary rear panel. The stock rear cover is black. It's got like that rear valence around the taillights. Um, but I just chose to do the primary again, keeping with the kind of one color that's all over the car. And the primary and the secondary are the same, by the way, and I'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, we're just going to go with the primary rear panel. For the roll cage, I went with the primary full cage. Uh, you have a couple options here of roll cages, but I think the primary full cage is the best, uh, most accurate match. If you look at the interior of Dom's Charger Daytona, it's fully kitted out. It's got a full cage and everything, but it doesn't have the pads. And it's also not small like the half cage so I just went with the primary full cage. As for the sun strips, Dom's Chargers doesn't have one so we just kept this stock. As for the exhaust, um, this is actually a really really cool one that Rockstar made I think as a nod to this car uh, is we are deciding to run the side exit exhaust here. Um, what's really cool about this is that uh, if you run the rear exit there's cutouts in the bumper but if you switch to the side exits like we do for this build the bumper in the rear the cutouts go away which I think looks really clean which is awesome so side exit exhausts are probably the most accurate match to his car for this and uh, they look ridiculously close to the uh, exhaust center on his car. Moving on to the fenders, we're gonna keep these stock. The fenders actually allow you to modify both the front fenders and the quarter panels in the rear, but we're just gonna keep both of them stock. Moving on to the headlight covers, uh, unfortunately there's actually no option in Benny's to have like the one piece headlights, you have to do the pop ups of some sort. So to save a lot of money and to uh, kind of create that same look when the headlights are down, I chose the full black lights. You could do the same thing with the black top lights, but I just don't think it's necessary paying extra for that. I just went with a full black, so that way when the headlights are down, it does look somewhat like integrated headlights, and I think they look pretty mean. Going to the hood, the nose accessories, we're gonna run none. These add like these weird lips, like it's almost like protectors for the front end. I don't really like the look of these, and of course Dom's Charger doesn't have one, so we stay away from those. 
For the hood catches, we went with the primary hood latches. Uh, again, primary or secondary, they're the same one. They're going to make no difference there. The mid hood latches, I feel like, are too far back, so we just go with the primary hood latches. As for the hood, we went with the deep inset hood, and this is another one like the exhaust that was like dead on accurate to Dom's Charger Daytona, so we just went with the deep inset hood. Um, this is by far the best match for this. Moving into the interior, we're going to go through this quick, but the dash, we went with the flocked rally dash. Now, uh, Dom's Charger, as I talked about, the interior is pretty well kitted out with um, lots of interior gauges and dials and things like that, in addition to the roll cage and everything else, the seats. So we just went with a flocked rally dash. If you look in the interior of Dom's car, it's got these aluminum door cards, which I'll go over in a minute. But the dash itself is also one piece of aluminum as well. And unfortunately in GTA, that just isn't an option. It's kind of these recycled same uh, dashes that you've seen on some of the other Benny's cars. So we're just going to keep this as the flocked rally dash. It gives it that like lighter gray texture which kind of matches with the aluminum you could also run the rally dash or the carbon rally dash and you can actually match that with the door panels um, you can match them up with the carbon door panels if you wanted to for the sake of accuracy for this build i just chose the aluminum door panels it doesn't match up the best but i think it's as close as possible to his car which is why i decided to run those i skipped over the dials but we're just going to keep the dial stock i feel like adding any dials is just a little bit overkill because um, you already have pretty much all the dials you need right in front of you uh, in the dash Moving on to the seats, I went with the Mark 1 Rally seats. These I think are the best option because the bucket seats in Dom's Charger are uh, kind of some weird shortened bucket seats that don't have headrests. So um, I think the, the two racing seats here are way too tall uh, and the carbon bucket seats just don't fit in my personal opinion either. So I just went with the Mark 1 Rally seats. It's got the red harnesses too, which match up with the rest of the car. As for the steering wheel, I went with the Sprint Professional. I think this is the best message you're going to get. As for the light color, there's really no difference here. I just went with ice white so I could see the gauges just a little bit better. All right, moving on to the lights, uh, headlights, I just kept them stock. And then neons, also there's no neons in his car, so I just kept those stock as well. As for the livery, again, Dom's Charger is just one clean maroon color, so I chose to run no livery on this car. As for the mirrors, uh, Dom's Charger Daytona actually has only one mirror on the driver's side, but unfortunately that isn't an option in GTA, so I just went with the bullet mirrors. The shape is very, very similar to the mirror that is on Dom's Charger Daytona, so I just went with these. Moving on to the plate, I just put it to yellow on black. There's really no option that'll fit here because Dom's Charger actually didn't have a license plate in the film. All right, moving into the respray, um, this one I can't actually show because unfortunately the way that paint works you can't actually show the base coat that you used um, after you put on a pearlescent but the base color that I used to paint this car was a garnet red uh, it's a metallic color because I wanted to run the pearlescent so the base color uh, so the primary and the secondary color are going to be the metallic garnet red and then for the pearlescent I chose to go with a wine red pearlescent there's a couple pearlescents that'll work I think garnet red is kind of the key and that's really going to get you the best match to the color that's on his car it's going to get you that like really good shade of maroon obviously you can create a better match with a crew color but I think you're uh, you're well on your way to creating a really good match with the garnet red and just playing around with the uh, pearlescents I tried a bunch of different combinations and this was the best one that I found but again that's kind of up to you you can play around with it I'm not claiming it to be 100% accurate but it is pretty close as for the secondary again metallic garnet red it's the same thing for the trim color I just chose graphite that's just the stock color you can change this up to match the color of the door cards but it also changes the back seats um, as well as the headliner and everything else and the seat uh, themselves so I just kept it to graphite and then as for the roof, I went with the uh, primary roof. Uh, really, you can actually run the stock roof. I didn't understand this when I first modified the car, but the primary um, is the color of the, the car's body, and then the secondary is the color of the roof. So if you run the stock roof, in this case, since the primary and the secondary are the same, uh, you don't need to worry about the roof being another color. So I ran primary roof, but you can really just run the stock roof. It makes no difference whatsoever since the two colors are the same. As for the skirts, I ran the primary custom skirt. This is the closest option. There aren't really actually skirts on the car. It's just kind of the raw rocker panels. And unfortunately, that's not an option to like remove those skirts. So that's why I chose the primary custom skirt. As for the splitters, I went with a full wedge splitter. I think this is the best match because it curves up and around the bumper slightly. Uh, and it also has like that black plastic finish. So I think it's the best match that you're going to get. Going to the spoiler, this is kind of the signature aspect of the build besides the... Uh, the front end which again is pretty questionable for this car but hey it works out in the end um, but for the spoiler we chose the primary super spoiler of course uh, this is probably the closest that you're going to get to a Dom's Charger Daytona so 
just run this one. It's the iconic Wang, you can't go wrong with this. And uh, this is as close as you're gonna get it. Moving on to the suspension, uh, Dom's charger is pretty low to the ground, so I just went with the lowest suspension possible. Um, kinda up to you, but again, since I noticed the car is pretty low already, it does tuck quite a bit in the front and the rear. I just lowered it as much as I could. And then moving on to the wheels, this was another one like the paint where there's some discrepancies here. Um, really it's all down to personal preference. So the wheels that I found to work the best are either chrome tuners, either the Apex or the Stance EG wheels. I like the tuner wheels slightly better because they have uh, a more high profile tire. They're a little bit thicker and you can kind of see the meat on the tires which I think matches up pretty well. And these also have a little bit of a dish which is somewhat close to uh, the wheels that are on Dom's Charger Daytona. I think these two wheels are probably the closest that you're gonna get. I chose these to save a little bit of money as well because I've already spent quite a bit of money on this update. Another option for these wheels are to go into the Chrome Sport wheels. And in here you can choose to either run the Inferno or if we go to the bottom here, you could run the Rough Weld or the Wangen Master. Those are all pretty similar in the style of the wheel. These are probably the closest styles that you're gonna get to the wheels that are on his car. Unfortunately, uh, in my personal preference, I think the sports wheels, the uh, the profile of the tires I think is way too low. I think it's really small like a rubber band, and I don't really like the look of these big wheels. I think that the tires should be a little bit thicker um, to give it that proper kind of resto mod look. So yeah, you can choose any of these wheels. Again, because these are chrome and they are sports wheels, they're slightly more expensive. So you could run the Rough Weld, the Wang and Master, or the Inferno. Uh, I know the Inferno was a pretty popular choice, but again, it doesn't really have that dish. So I think looking for a wheel that has a dish and kind of making your decision based on that is probably the best option. Again, this is kind of all down to personal preference. And obviously, again, because we're running chrome wheels, uh, we're not gonna touch the wheel color. And then for the tires, tires are just gonna be kept stock. As for the wheelie bar, again, very, very clean build, so there's no wheelie bar or anything, so we leave that off. And then the windows, there are no tints either. Uh, at least at the pictures that I looked at, there really weren't any obvious window tints, so I just kept those off too. Then finally, with the window plates, uh, there's no window plates, there's no louvers, no uh, braces, as you can see here, no nothing, so we just keep those off. And that's the build, that's pretty much it. That's a pretty accurate, uh, in my opinion, uh, replica of his car using pretty much all the parts that we can use here in Benny's. So let's pull it outside and take a better look at some of the details on this car. All right, so pulling it out of Benny's here, you can see why I decided to go with the headlights that I chose. Um, if you look here, the front, the headlights themselves, obviously I used the black housings, which I think matches up really well and they from a distance, I think uh, they do look pretty accurate to his car. They kind of look like they're integrated. Obviously, when you turn the headlights on, they are going to flip up. But from a distance, and if you're just taking a shot like this, um, you really can't tell the difference. And I think it looks pretty good. Probably the closest you're going to get to the integrated headlights that he had on his car. But other than that, uh, I think this is a pretty accurate build. Um, I really, really like... Uh, that Rockstar kind of paved the way with all the modifications that we could use to uh, make a pretty accurate replica of the car. Um, and I think they, uh, they give us some nice tuning parts to work with. Again, kind of questionable that they use the Challenger to do this uh, Charger Daytona front-end conversion with, but hey, um, I think the final product is definitely worth it, and I think it definitely looks close to Dom's Charger Daytona. So um, the engine bay, obviously pretty well detailed. Um, this is obviously the same as we saw in the original Gauntlet Classic. It doesn't change at all, and you actually can't change any of these options as many as either. Uh, the interior, we already pretty much know because uh, we, we chose all the interior mods ourselves. The side exit exhaust there, the door cards that we chose, and then the rear. I don't, I think the trunk doesn't open because it doesn't want to hit the wing, but I'm not really quite sure about that. Um, and then obviously we have our beautiful interior here. I'll take a little zoom in so we can see just how uh, accurate everything is. We got our steering wheel, all the gauges and stuff like that, the shifter, and it also is the hydro handbrake, which is another thing that is inside of Dom's Charger's uh, interior as well. So yeah, I think this is a pretty accurate replica build. Um, again, <laughs> the whole like using the, uh, the Challenger chassis for this was a little bit questionable, but I think the build itself turned out pretty good. So um, with that being said, guys, um, I'm going to go work on some more videos on these cars that we got as part of the Los Santos Summer Special, but I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and found this helpful. Uh, if you did, please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave your support, uh, show some feedback in a comment. If you happen to find any better matches for either the wheels or the paint color, um, whether you play around the pearlescence or you look at some different wheels, I know there's a couple street wheels that also work, but unfortunately you can't get those in chrome, so I just stay away from those. 
But if you happen to find any better matches for some of the things that I used in this video, do let me know in the comments. I'd love to see if anybody has any suggestions for things that could change about this, because sometimes it was a bit of a stretch to get the right parts. But overall, I think it was a pretty good build, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If this helped you out, again, leave any feedback you'd like to in the comments below, and consider subscribing to the channel uh, to support me as I will be posting more videos about the Los Santos Summer Special. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, have a great day, and enjoy the update.